In this video you will learn the difference between observables and promises. And still a lot of people, when they start learning Angular, are questioning why do we need RxJS, why do we need observables, we have promises and we are not using observables in other frameworks. And this is a valid question. But the main problem with that is that a lot of people don't want to learn RxJS or observables, they simply try to convert all their observables to promises and work with them in a way how they used to work previously. This is a wrong approach. Why that? Because observables and RxJS is a co-component of Angular and it makes a lot of sense to use it correctly. Let's have a look. As you can see here, I wrote inside NGO-init two different things. We are using here this HTTP GET from HTTP Client module and we are making here an API call to which we react. By default inside Angular we are getting observable from HTTP GET. As you can see here back we are getting an observable. This is why with the observable we are writing .subscribe and we are good. But typically people want to use something they are familiar with. This is why they simply use to promise to convert any observable that they see to promise and they are writing then in order to get Get data. This will work, kind of, but this is not an angular way. So the biggest difference between observable and promise is that observable is a stream of data, which actually means it can deliver new data during some period of time. Inside promise we are getting our data back only once. The second important point, we can cancel observables, but we can't cancel promises. As a result of our subscribe, we are getting subscription, and then we can write just subscription.unsubscribe to unsubscribe from it. We can't really do something like that in promise. There are some specs that it will be possible in the future, but we don't have it now. Additionally to that, promise does not have inside any additional methods. We simply write then and we are writing the whole logic that we need inside then. With observables we have hundreds of different operators that we can use, like for example map, filter, take until and so on, which actually means after we are getting some data, we can write here pipe and we can write lots of different transformations, like for example filter, map, which can help us to change our stream of data before we resolve it. It is much more flexible because it is going in the same direction like Lodash with hundreds of different helpers, but here we are talking about asynchronous stuff. And last two differences are that observables are lazy and promises not. What does it mean? If we are just writing to promise, so we are creating promise without then, without any child promises, it will be still executed. But if we are writing an observable without subscribe, it won't be executed, because it is lazy. And the last difference is, when we have some errors inside observables, we are getting it inside our subscribe method. And if we have some error inside a promise, we are getting an error inside then, inside our child promise. So these were all differences between observables and promises, but I think people have lots of confusion just because they start to work with observables on HTTP requests. And typically you are getting the response from HTTP only once, which actually means it is not clear for people why do we really need observables if we still get the result only once. But it is important to understand that we can use observables not just with HTTP, but with anything else. It can be mouse event on the screen, it can be some stream of your data inside the service, or it can be an API call. And you can combine all of them together. Observables is not just used for HTTP calls inside Angular. And I highly recommend you to use only observables inside Angular and never use promises. And actually, if you are interested to know how to build search bar without any libraries inside Angular, make sure to check this video also.